One, two, three, four, hey.
hello everybody. Welcome in to the Who's Number One press conference. We had the women's press conference yesterday. That match is going down tonight. We've got the men's press conference coming at you live. I'm super excited. We're going to be talking to our athletes in weight or in match order. So you're going to see them in the order they're going to wrestle tomorrow. We're going to hear from some incredible athletes and we're starting out at 170 pounds. We've got Rocco Welsh and Manny Rojas. They're going to compete first. You guys come on up and uh, it's going to be awesome. I'm David Bray. Super excited to join you guys and to join some incredible athletes here. Some of the best high school wrestlers in all of the country. Guys, go ahead, grab the mics, and we'll get going. Um, hey, I'm excited. You guys are part of a 170-pound four-man group that's super elite. Manny, you're number one. What did you What did you think when you first heard about the invite to come to who's number one? I've been waiting for it for a while. Told me about going to get who's at uh, Fargo. They, when I got that call on the way back home, though, I was really excited. No, a four-man or not, I was here to have some fun, compete, show off my skills. Rocco, you're moving up to 170. You were at 160 at Fargo, but you're but you're plenty big for the weight class. Talk about that move up from 160 and and what it's been like. I mean, not just move up from 60, but you've been growing like crazy over the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've kind of just been uh, I've been taking my lifting really seriously, and uh, it's been a little bit of a struggle to kind of like stay in shape while you're like getting bigger at the same time. But I've done pretty good so far, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. Let's talk about the matchup. Winner of this one will be sitting in the finals and, and wrestling the winner of the other 170 uh, match. What kind of a match do you guys expect this to be? And, and Rocco, let's start with you. Um, I think it's going to be a really exciting match. I think uh, there's going to be a lot of points scored and like a lot of action and stuff. And I'm just hoping for like, a really good, fun match. Points and action sounds good to me. Manny, what do you think? What kind of match can people expect? Yeah, definitely. It'll be a tough one. You know, we're going to definitely grid it out. Hopefully put points on, points on the board and hopefully put on a show for you all. This is a year, Manny, where Michigan wrestling is really on display. Four of you guys on the men's card, one on the women's card. Yep. Uh, what's going on in Michigan that's got so many of you guys competing for the top spot in the country? No, we're just a powerhouse, how it used to be with Reeder and Metcalf, and we're just taking on their, filling in their shoes. Is that something that you take pride in, is the, the growth of, of, not just growth, but the success of, of Michigan high school wrestling? Yes, definitely. That's great. And Rocco, you come from not just Pennsylvania that's, you know, so, so strong, but that Waynesburg program, right? Waynesburg, you guys, incredible performance at PIAA's last year, one of the best teams around in the country. Um, what's it like training in an environment like that? Yeah, it's kind of like, like the standard is just kind of high, like in PA and especially like Waynesburg. So, uh, so this is just like a high expectation. So uh, just good guys in the room. We're just constantly getting better. Rocco, being part of a four-man, having that opportunity, what does the opportunity mean to you? Well, it's, it means so much to me. I'm very grateful for the opportunity. It's going to be very fun. Great. Um, last thing, what do you guys think? You got the uniforms, got the gear. How's it, you guys are looking good. What do you, how are you feeling about it? I feel great, yeah. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Hoping we wrestle today, but got to wait one more day, one more night. One more day. Yeah, these, these, uh, these outfits are sweet. I love them. Yeah, awesome. Okay, hey, actually one more thing. We've got uh, on the other side of the four-man, Gabe Arnold, Braden Thompson. Yep. What, what do you guys think that match is going to look like? Do you expect one guy or the other to come out? Do you have a, a thought about that? Manny, let's start with you. No, I wrestle Thompson, and he's definitely a great, he's a fighter, and he's going to definitely wrestle Arnold hard. I was supposed to wrestle Arnold twice at uh, 32s in fall class. We never showed up, but, yeah, I think it'll be a fun one to watch, definitely. Okay. What do you think, Rocco? Yeah, I think it's going to be really exciting to watch, too. I'm actually excited for that one. It's going to be good, yeah. It's going to be good. You guys are kicking it off. I can't wait. Thanks for joining us, and uh, man, we'll see you guys put online tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. We are going to talk with our competitors in the second match of the night. It's the second of our best of four bracket at 170 pounds. Guys, go ahead, pick up the mics. We've got Braden Thompson. We've got Gabe Arnold. Guys, I'm excited to have you here. Uh, first thing, let's talk about the matchup. How do you feel about your opponent? What, what do you think your opponent does well? Braden, let's start with you. What do you, what do you see when you think about Gabe? Uh, he's, he's got a good stance. He stays in good position. So you just... Got to find a way to score and in there, working in my ties and stuff. All right. And Gabe, what do you think when you think about Braden Thompson and his style? Um, Braden's a slick wrestler. I mean, he's got good movement, feet move really well, especially for a 170-pounder. So um, he's got good attacks. Like I said, he's 
really slick. He's good in the ties, get it out the ties. So, um, but yeah, so. All right, so if you were going to tell people why this match in particular is the one they should tune in for, what would you say? What do you think this match is going to look like tomorrow night, Gabe? Um, I think for one, it's going to be it's going to be a change of pace of what people are used to seeing from me. You know, they're used to seeing the strong stance and the strong hand fighting. You know, finding my scores. But I think what I've been working on since Fargo has just been getting better, and not only those areas, but those areas that not a lot of people know about. So that be being open in my stance, moving my hands, moving my feet in ways that people haven't seen from me just yet. So um, I think that's the big thing that I've been focusing on a lot. And you know, I think that's going to be. One of those big things that you're going to want to see is two open wrestlers, you know, can bang in the ties, can bang not even in the ties on open as well. So, I mean, I think those are two big things, you know, you can be looking forward in our match. So, Yeah, that sounds awesome. What do you think, Braden? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I can, we can for sure expect some, like, good scrambles. We're both pretty good at, you know, not letting each other score, being stingy, you know. So I, you can expect maybe a high scoring match or a long scrambling match. Either way, it's going to be a great one. Being stingy, you were in a, a tight Fargo final with Manny Rojas. It was 3-2 late in the match, and you're close. You know, you're working for that last takedown. Ended up giving up. What do you, what do you have you taken away from that match? What have been the things that you've worked on to kind of build from from being so close in Fargo? Really working from my outside because uh, Manny did a well, did a great job, like shutting me down, not letting me get in there, working my stuff that I'm good at. Uh, so what I've been working on is just staying out, staying elusive, staying aware, being aware of what's open, what's not open, what's there, what's not there, being my, make sure my defense is straight and everything's all good. Gabe, you got it done in Fargo, right? You won the title and, and man, that was an awesome moment on a big stage. What have been the things since then that you've really focused on or, or some of the takeaways from that, from that Fargo performance? Um, so like I said, I've been working on, you know, being more open, not like not being in the ties and, you know, not being there all the time. I know I'm good there. I know I can hand fight. You know, those are things I can already go ahead and check off and, you know, just continue getting better at those. But now it's adding in this extra part of my game that's always been there, but it hasn't been able to be to be shown just yet. And I think, you know, right now is one of those greatest time, one of the great times to do that. You know, I'm on a great card with some great competitors. So why not go out there and put it on the line? So. It's, it's going to be a glimpse of, you know, the rest of my year and, you know, how I plan on wrestling, you know, the rest of my career as well. So some takeaways, like I said, is just being able to score from not only in the ties but without the ties. And, you know, and I did some really good things in that match. You know, I, got, I was able to get the push out, able to force the shot clock, you know, and I, I don't remember if I got put on the shot clock or not. But, um, but, yeah, those are some of the takeaways I've taken away from. So, yeah. Gabe, Georgia Wrestling, this is a group coming through. Your class, uh, the, the class ahead of you, is just really some incredible, incredible stuff. Obviously, you wrestle at Wyoming, Sam, that's in, that's in Pennsylvania, but from Georgia, what does it mean to represent this group of Georgia guys who has, who has come through together and had a lot of success right alongside each other? Yeah, so um, we've been working together. I've been working with the Minion guys for a long time now, like three, four years now, and ever since I've come up in the sport, started off with wrestling in this small little church with guys like Caleb Henson and Caden McCurry and Jackson Smith, and they all used to beat the crap out of me then. So um, it's been great coming up with those guys, and it's basically been just the whole Minion contingency, you, I guess you could say, but, you know, I've come up with those guys, and even though they've been a little bit older with me, you know, I've been wrestling with them, and they've been getting me better, and, you know, these past few years, I've been getting better to where I can push them, and so they've been getting better from me. We learn from each other. So, I mean, it's just, it's a lot of hard work that we've all put in together, and for it to all go to a waste is a shame. So being one of those Georgia kids is, you know, the next thing for me is helping these younger guys get better, you know, and just being there for them. And, you know, whether it be technique or anything of not, not even wrestling nature as well, you know, just being there as one of the best friends, you know, I think that's another thing that we've done really well is that we've all been so close together. We've all been, you know, whether we, it be in a group chat, just goofing around, but, you know, even at tournaments as well. So, um, but I think that's what really just boosted us to that next level is always being around each other and just being each other's best friends, you know, just, I think that's what's pushing Georgia to that next level and it's what's going to continue to push Georgia to that next level as well, so. Man, it's cool. Yeah, it's been really fun to see that success. Braden, I got another question for you. It was, a, it was your last minute addition to this, to this card, right? You, you know, we had an injury, James Rowley's out, all of a sudden you're in. What was that? transition like for you when when you heard this there was this opportunity and you decided to, to kind of seize the moment 
Um, I mean, nothing really changed. I'm I'm more of a I'll wrestle anyone, anywhere, anytime. I, doesn't matter. I always I work hard every day, so I'm here to wrestle. You're yeah, you're ready here to wrestle. Excited to see it. Last question for you guys. Besides your match, is there one other match tomorrow night that you're most excited to see? Um, yeah, curious about that, Braden. What do you think? Um, uh, for sure, the T.J. Stewart match. I want to watch him. Explosive dude, for sure. Uh, and then probably my boy Jordan Williams. I want to see how he's going to hold up and see what he's going to do. Yeah, I'm excited for both those. It's going to be great. Gabe, is there a match you're looking forward to? Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, the 170-pound match, two different contrasts of style. we got a hand fighter, in which both guys are hand fighters, but we got one guy who can attack opposite sides of the body, and we got another guy who's just very one-sided. So obviously 170, but kind of going off of what Braden said, I'm excited to see Caleb Henson go out there and put on a show, you know, repping Georgia. So, you know, we're here to do big things, and we're here to walk out of this place being the number one wrestlers in the nation. So... Love it. Guys, best of luck tomorrow. Thanks for sharing some thoughts today. And, uh, man, we'll see you then. All right? We are moving down the card. We've got something exciting, something we've never done before. It's a futures match. We've got two absolute rising stars in the sport, Bo Bassett, Seth Mendoza. Guys, how are you doing so far? I'm doing great. You know, I'm super excited to be here, waiting for this match for a long time. I'm just hoping to get a really good scrap out here. I'm just hoping it's going to be really fun. Bo, how are you doing? Man, I'm doing awesome. Um, you know, it's my first competition back from the Worlds, uh, so that, that's motivated me a lot, and I'm uh, really excited to get back on the mat and get competing again. Bo, talked about the World Championships. You got it done on a big stage. That was a goal that you had had for a really long time. What was the feeling like for you accomplishing that goal and getting it done, um, a goal you really had circled for years? Yeah, um, it, it was great getting it done. You know, some of the past Young Guns guys have done it, and uh, it was a goal I set out when I was, you know, my first year of wrestling. I always wanted to run the flag and things, uh, but to get it done was, was truly amazing, a great experience. Um, I'll remember it forever. Uh, I just want to thank my dad and all my coaches and everything, you know, helped me get to that point and uh, get to this point today. But that definitely uh, put some extra motivation on me in these past few months of wrestling and practice and things, and uh, I'm just really excited to get competing. Seth, you got it done in Fargo, right? That was a, another big stage and a huge moment. What, was that, what did that accomplishment mean to you to get that done even before your high school career started? You know, I've been, I haven't been wrestling for uh, freestyle for much time, so, you know, last year was pretty much my first year ever going at it, so I'm just really grateful for all my coaches helping me get there. You know, I've known about Fargo since I was probably like seven years old, and I've been just setting that goal. haven't really been doing much freestyle, but I got it done got the job done and you know I'm just I was super happy to get that goal and just wiped out. Awesome. The last time you guys both got your hand raised, freestyle. Now we're switching gears, folk style, college rules. What's the transition been like not just from freestyle to folk style, but now thinking about a match with with college rules. Um, Seth, let's start with you. You know, like it hasn't been much of a transition, you know. I mean, freestyle isn't different from folk style and I've been doing this for now like 6 7 years maybe more and you know college rules I've been here before done that so it's it shouldn't be that bad you know I'm super excited uh, riding time very happy about that you know just college out of bounds so great super excited Bo what's the transition been like for you from from freestyle to folk style um, like I said it's, it's an easy transition um, I'm really really excited for the college rules um, you know it's, it's a long match uh, that's what I like I like going long um, I like high pace and a long match uh, you know, take some on the deep waters, but um, you know, I'm, I really, I'm really excited for the four-point back points. Uh, you know, the stalling rules, the push-outs, uh, the out of bounds, everything like that, the danger rule, all those new things that the college uh, rules bring. I'm just super excited for, um, and I know it's going to be really fun. You guys have wrestled before, but not for years, right? You guys wrestled as kind of little kids. Now you're you're moving into to kind of you know your elite youth wrestling. Now moving into kind of elite high school level. What's that transition like? And is there anything that you guys take away from those meetings that you had years ago? Bo, let's start with you. 
Um, yeah, you know, we wrestled a lot in the past um, at all the big tournaments. Normally, you know, late, late in a big tournament, normally we wrestle a lot in the finals and, uh, you know, big dual meets and things like that. But, um, you know, I just know that Seth's a really great opponent. Um, you know, he has a high pace as well. Uh, we kind of wrestle a little bit the same. You know, we like to go high pace and super hard. But, you know, that was a long time ago, all those matches. And uh, I think I'm a completely different wrestler now. And, uh, you know, I'm ready to go. Seth, what do you think? So, you know, we haven't wrestled in probably three years or so, and I know I've changed a lot, Bo's changed a lot, he's a great opponent, and in the past it's been back and forth, and you know, now it just, it's going to be a lot different. We're both more mature, we're both a lot bigger, a lot stronger, so, you know, I'm just really excited for the new opportunity three years later to wrestle here. I'm excited too. People are going to want to tune in for this one. Guys, thanks so much for sharing some thoughts, and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you. The next match on the card is at 182 pounds. TJ Stewart, Jack Waymeyer. I'm excited. You guys have a little bit of history. Um, talk about the. Let's hear from the, you know what your perspective are on what you've learned wrestling each other in the past. Jack, we'll start with you. I mean, TJ is a great wrestler. I mean, wrestled in the beginning of the year and then finals, national preps. Uh, learned a lot from both matches and just really excited to wrestle the third one. TJ, what about you? Um, yeah, as you said, Jack's a great wrestler too. I think. Uh, I think it was a lot more eye-opening for me. You know, Jack's really good when he controls the paces of the matches. And, you know, he, like, he, as you can tell, like, wherever he dictates the pace and kind of, you know, sets his tone, like, he's almost unbeatable. So I think going into this match, knowing that if I can, you know, have sort of, some sort of grip on the pace and actually be able to control the match, it'll go my way. But it should be fun. And I'm hoping we go, go out there, you know, score a lot of points or, you know, if it's in overtime, you know, just have some fun with it. It's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity for both of us. So I'm, I'm excited for it. The last match in particular was just razor thin, right? It came down to overtime. Uh, There's su su such little difference separating you guys. Um, what's it going to take TJ to get it done tomorrow? Uh, I think, like I said before, uh, control the pace and finishing my shots. Um, he's probably one of the harder guys I've ever had to finish on. And you know, knowing that if I get on the leg, actually finishing the shot will help me dictate the pat uh, pace. But you know, it's it's big. I mean. It's, a, it's the little things that matter. It's the little things that separate you from being the best, and that's why he's probably one of the best because it's hard to finish on him. But you know, when I go into the match and I finish my shots, you know, it should, it should swing my way. Yeah, and Jack, same kind of question to you. What do you, what do you think it's going to take to maybe open that match up or, or or get a win that maybe doesn't need to be right down to the wire? I mean, I, I'm here for a reason. Uh, I feel like I've wrestled my match. No one can beat me. I think I've, I've proved time in and time out that if I'm my best, then I can beat anybody at my weight or anybody in the country for, for that matter. And uh, I think for this match coming up, uh, just wrestle my match, uh, get up my offense, top, bottom, pretty much everything, you know. Yeah. Just, if, I'm, if I'm my best. Here for a reason, both you guys are, and it's, I mean, it's been for both of you, a year of a ton of success, and, and success that, that maybe not everybody saw coming. What, what did it take, Jack, for you to have such an outstanding year to notch so many high-level wins last year? Uh, I think it's just knowing that, I mean, I can be the best, believing in myself and knowing that uh, uh, you're as good as you want to be. And if, if you push yourself and you truly believe that you can be the best, then you'll do it and I think that's was the big big thing for me last year and it's uh, still proving to myself that that I'm the best. TJ similar question to you I mean sophomore year cutting a lot of weight didn't didn't have the success that you wanted to have and then last year man you, you put together a string of incredible wins what did it take to go from a year that maybe was a little disappointing to one that was outstanding? I think uh, just being the best version of myself I think a lot of times as wrestlers, we kind of tend on putting, being the best, and we kind of look at others that, oh, this is how they're being the best, so this is how we need to be the best. When it's not really that, it's like being the best version of yourself. So my best version of myself is, you know, making a podium. 
then I'm gonna make sure I'm making the podium every single time because that's the best version of me. Or as in, in this instance, my best version is being the number one in the country. So I'm gonna make sure that I be number one in the country because that's the best version of me, and that's what I strive for um, day in and day out. And I think that's what everybody should do. I mean, look at look at a year ago, me and Jack. Um, Probably we're considered one of the top guys in the country. I think we we're considered like by outside the cuffs, like top 20 or something. And look at us now. A year can a year can make a difference. So I think that that goes out for anybody. Just striving, striving to be your best self. You know, the work will take care of itself. Just trust the process. That's what I always say. A year has made a big difference. It's been inspirational for me to see both you guys making massive gains this year. I'm excited for you guys to lay it on the line tomorrow. And I appreciate you guys sharing some thoughts. Good luck tomorrow, guys. Looking forward to it. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. The next match tomorrow night is going to be at 145 pounds. We've got Jackson Arrington. We've got Hunter Garvin. It's going to be a super exciting match. And I want to know what you guys think this match is going to look like. What are fans going to look forward to tomorrow? Jackson, what do you think? I mean, I'm excited. I mean, just to, just to be here, just to wrestle. I mean, I have a very offensive style, and I think it's going to be fun to watch uh, this match. High output for sure. Hunter, what do you think people can look forward to for this match tomorrow? Um, for sure. I'm like, grateful for another opportunity. I'm excited to just get out there and get another chance to put my name out there. And yeah, it's going to be a great match. You guys both come from really wrestling rich parts of the country. There's a lot of tradition in both your areas. And I, and I want to know kind of what, what kind of impact that's had on you. Um, Hunter trained a big game, you know, Iowa City West. What's, what's been, uh, what have been the key pieces of your development as a wrestler? I'm um, just learning to have fun with the sport and to have, have fun in training, have fun in practice. Um, you know, wrestling wrestling's a big part of life, but it isn't everything, and you know, it's not something that you need to focus on 100%, but for sure when we do focus on it, it's, it's getting right on, right, right on it. Yeah, awesome. And Jackson, I mean, you come from another wrestling hotbed, right? You're, you're at that Forest Hills program, trained with Young Guns. Um, who have been some of the people that have poured into your development over the course of your career? Oh, for sure. Uh, the Strip Matters, my high school kid, Jake Strayer, my uncle, my uncle Shane Valco. Just all those guys, just a combination of like their styles and what they believe in wrestling. It's just, it's just helped so much just with my, uh, my development. Jackson, you got the call late about this match. Meyer Shapiro was in and then he was hurt. Um, what was going through your head when you, know, when you heard this was an opportunity that, that could be in front of you? Oh, I was going to take it 100%. I mean, all, I mean this is a crazy event just to, just to be at. So any opportunity I could get to come here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be here. What's been the, the transition like for you from from not planning to do this to now all of a sudden you've got about a, what, a week's notice or something? Yeah. Uh, what, what's that last week or so looked like? I mean, I had to worry about getting my weight down, so that was the first thing I thought about, but then I was just, just training, just getting ready, just working out with Rocco and stuff at practice, just getting our minds right and just getting set for this. So similar question to you, Hunter. You're, you're planning for one opponent, and now you find out, all right, new opponent. Uh, what, what changed, if anything, for you in the preparation for, it's not Meyer, now it's Jackson? Uh, nothing at all, really. I mean, we don't, like, you know, we don't focus on training for one person. We focus on training to, for, uh, for everyone, for the, for the best guys there are. And, you know, um, it includes everyone. And, yeah, just didn't, don't train. We don't, we, don't train to, we don't train for one person. We just train in general. Awesome. Uh, other than your match, tomorrow night, is there a match that you're most excited about watching? Um, any, any match on the card that you think people should circle? And obviously they're going to highlight 145, but also what's another one that you're looking forward to? Um, well, other, another, uh, other Iowa guy, Nate Jesseroga, is going to wrestle. Excited to see him compete, and I bet he can uh, put on a show for Iowa. Yeah, Jez Rogo is fun to watch too. That'll be a good one. Any, anything else, other matches you're looking forward to? Uh, definitely uh, watching Rocco. I mean, that's my trading partner, so I mean, He's, he's here, he's competing, so I'm just excited to watch him. He's been working hard. Yeah, making the move up to 170. That's going to be that's gonna be a really fun one. Well, guys, appreciate getting your thoughts. I'm really looking forward to this match. Like you said, Jackson, it's going to be, I think, a lot of points. I think it's going to be high-paced. I think there's going to be a, uh, some really awesome action, and people are not going to want to miss this one. So Yeah, for sure. Good luck tomorrow, guys. Thank you. Sounds good. Thank you.
Our next matchup is going to be at 113 pounds. Leo DeLuca, Braden Davis. This is a match I'm really excited for. It's a couple of Fargo champs. Leo, you got it done, 16U. Braden, you got it done in junior. Uh, how has training been for you guys since Fargo? Leo, what have you been focused on? Uh, I've just been focused on um, just crisping things up a little bit more. You know, techniques there, it's just not uh, as smooth as it, as it will be or as it can be. So there's always room for improvement, and that's what I've been focusing on, is just cleaning things up, not being sloppy with my attacks and stuff. Braden, what's your focus been since winning Fargo and, and that transition? Um, I guess like just mainly just getting back to the folk style like way and uh, that it, that's about it. Nothing really specific. Just uh, get back into folk style and uh, that's it. You guys are are both in the position where you've got a, a high school teammate also wrestling at that event. It's a pretty unusual thing, right? Not a lot of high schools are are good enough to have two guys wrestling for the number one spot in the country. Mm -hmm. um, Braden, Dundee is not a not a large school. Your your graduating class is like I, I don't know, 125 something like that. Um, maybe maybe a little less. What what is going on in Dundee that has created so much success? Um, I mean, I guess um, just like the parents, the parents have um, like raised like so we've got like a good so Stony Buell, Case Swiderski, me, and like we've we've just kind of all grew up together, and like our parents have like put us like together, and we've all just worked really hard. And, uh, you know, that, that's just it. Um, our parents really, really, uh, like, they're the reason for it. So. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's showing for sure. And, I mean, not just Dundee, obviously. We've got two other Michigan guys on the card outside of Dundee, and we've got uh, another, another young woman on the card. So, so it's awesome. Um, Leo, you're on the card. So is TJ Stewart. Yeah. Blair, I mean, such a wrestling-rich tradition there. What, is it, what does it mean for you to get ready to represent Blair Academy this year? Uh, I, I just feel um, like blessed to be able to have the opportunity to represent them as a school. And, um, yeah, it's unfortunate that Mark's not here with us. He would have, but stuff happens. And, um, yeah, I'm just super excited and feel grateful for the experience I've been given. As you guys have been preparing for this event, what's been one of the biggest things that you focused on? What's been a, a, a real um, focal point in your training? Um, focal point in my training is probably my mat wrestling. Um, my mat wrestling really was never solid, but now we made improvements, adjustments, and I'm ready to compete tomorrow. Mat wrestling, big focus. Braden, what about for you? Um, I guess uh, like a big focus for me is probably mat wrestling as well because that's like the main tr uh, like transition from folk style to freestyle you know just you know going straight in my top like uh, attacks like from takedowns and uh, stuff like that so so we've got a battle of Fargo champs it's pretty cool it would be great if we could always see all the the, the juniors and the cadets square off we get to see it in this case um, Braden, did you get a chance to watch Leo's Fargo final if so what do you remember from that match um, no sir I, I didn't get to watch him no, so. you got no memories. You were focused on yourself, <laughs> and that makes sense. Leo, did you watch? Did you watch Braden's match at all? Yeah, I watched. I, I don't know. I didn't see. I only saw like bits of it, and I just remember the one kid, Reinda. I think that's who we wrestled in front of the little noise kid. I don't know. I just remember him being down ten two, or something. That's, yeah, that's I, all you remember. I was getting Culver's at the time. I was eating. You're getting Culver's. You guys are more focused on your own stuff, and that's that's just fine. That's cool. Well, hey, great. This is gonna be a great matchup tomorrow. I want to know why people should tune in for the 113 match in particular. What do you think, Leo? Uh, both of our styles are entertaining. We're not we're not we're not gonna sit back and just relax for seven minutes. It's not gonna be one one. There's gonna be a lot of points on the board, and that's what people like, and that's what it's gonna be given tomorrow. What do you think, Braden? Why should people circle 113 tomorrow? I agree. Uh, action filled, and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. So, I'm looking forward to it too. I appreciate getting some thoughts from you guys, and best of luck as you guys prepare in the next 24 hours. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Our next matchup is going to be at 160 pounds. This is a match I'm really excited about. You guys were both uh, performing on big stages in different parts of the world over the summer. Josh Barr, you were you were getting it done at Fargo. Levi Haynes, you were on the Cadet World Team. Uh, guys, what were those experiences like? Levi, what are, what are some of your takeaways from being on that Cadet World's team and having that international experience? 
No, it was very unique. Um, uh, it was really nice to be able to go overseas, wrestle uh, a lot of different styles than what we see here. Uh, it was a really fun trip, learned a lot over there, and uh, yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Josh, you were in a, a really tough 160 bracket at Fargo, and you got it done in a, in a match that was a, a rematch from the cadet trials. You got a win in a match that had been a loss previously. Um, what was that experience like for you, both leading up to that, to that match and then the moments after? Um, you know, cadet trials was a heartbreak. So, uh, you know, getting that one back at Fargo, you know, meant, it meant a lot. Um, but it was, you know, awesome experience overall, you know. Uh, I like to think next best thing after I lost at cadet trials, which was winning Fargo. So, you know, I went there and got the job done got the job done and that earned your spot here to who's number one um, so as you found out about wrestling who's number one what, what were the thoughts going through your mind what were some of the things that you were most looking forward to uh, I'm just excited to be on the stage you know uh, the platform that flow wrestling has you know it's awesome and uh, you know I'm just excited to get my name out there and you know hopefully put on the match tonight you know yeah I would love it uh, Levi what, what was going through your mind when you were thinking about this opportunity and, and getting the chance to wrestle who's number one no, I was thinking about how unique of an opportunity it is. Uh, there's been a lot of big names that I've gotten to wrestle in this tournament. Uh, so I thought it was pretty cool to see all the guys who have competed here. And I was extremely excited to be able to come out and represent my, my club and uh, just put my name out there. And uh, so, yeah. Talked about representing your club. That's the M2 Training Center, and and man, you make some sacrifices to train there, right? You travel a couple, a couple hours right. e each way to get to practice. What's going on at M2 that, that makes it worth all that extra effort? Uh, it's the system of wrestling that they have going on there. Um, just working on scoring points and it's uh, just the, the people there, they understand wrestling and uh, it shows. I mean, uh, Coach David's still competing, competing at the highest level and getting it done. So it's very easy to, to follow this system because uh, it shows it works. Yeah, absolutely. And man, Josh, you've got a great t training situation as well. Coach Donahoe, you know, we see wrestlers coming out of his system a lot, all the time. What's your training system like? And why are we seeing so much success coming out of the state of Michigan this year? Um, I think that uh, the group that we have coming out right now in Michigan is really special. Um, we, a lot of us grew up together and we've been trained together since, you know, we were about five, six years old. And uh, I think it's just uh, the relationships that uh, there is, you know, we're all, you know, together and training together, which, uh, you know, which makes everybody better. And then um, as long as, or as far as the club side goes, I think uh, Coach Donahoe, you know, he's like a brother to me now. and. Uh, he just knows the sport, you know, uh, from a lot of perspectives. And, um, you know, he lets us train, you know, other places to gain more perspective. And I think that's what, um, you know, what helps the best is he's able to uh, give us his side. And then, you know, if he doesn't know something the best, well, then we go and see somebody else. And, you know, it helps us. That's cool. You know, sometimes you hear coaches getting territorial. It's cool that he's like, hey, you know what? Go, go pick these guys' brains. Earlier, Josh, you said you want this to be match of the night. Love to hear it. What about this match do you think people should be most excited about? Um, I think our styles clash, you know, really well. Um, you know, obviously my Fargo finals match, I wasn't as offensive as I, uh, you know, like to be. But, you know, I think we're both, uh, you know, exciting wrestlers. And I think we're, I, I don't know about him, but I'm going to just go, you know, let it fly, put it all on the line, you know. Levi, what about you? If somebody asks you, why should I watch 160 tomorrow, what would you say? Uh, I think they should watch 160 because they know we're both going to come out and, and we're going to go at it. Uh, you know, a uh, seven-minute match, a lot of wrestling to be done. It's going to be a lot of points scored, so I think uh, it's a very good match to, to watch. It's going to be a great match to watch. I can't wait. I'm excited, guys. Good luck, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Our next matchup is at 106 pounds. This is a match I'm really excited about. In July, we saw you guys doing incredible things, opposite sides of the globe, and now we're gonna get to see the match go down. Anthony Knox, you got it done in Fargo this year and got a golden ticket just a day later. Yeah. What was the experience like for you winning on that big stage and then finding out you were gonna be in who's number one? 
Um, well, when I won, I was kind of looking forward to maybe getting a golden ticket, but I didn't know it would come that soon. Um, we were watching the video of my, of my uh, match on the previous day, and then I got the golden ticket, and I was pretty hyped to come out here and compete. I'm excited to have you out here, and it's going to be a really interesting matchup. Luke Lillidal, your matches in Budapest were some of the most fun matches to watch. Uh, yeah. what, what, what match stands out the most to you from Budapest? I have a feeling I know what it's going to be. Uh, obviously, the one I lost, but the Russian one, too, yes. was uh, very exciting because it was my, my, first, my first time wrestling a Russian, and obviously it came down to the last few seconds. So came down the last few seconds, you got it done, and I mean, the output was incredible in that one. What did it mean to you to bring home a, a silver medal from the World Championships? It meant a lot. Of, it meant that I was, you know, training with the right people and doing everything right. And even though I didn't win, I still won a medal, so. It was, it was later on when we had the conversation about who's number one, and you know, what, what was going through your mind? What were you thinking about that opportunity? Uh, I felt like it was a great opportunity to just, you know, wrestle the, the number one kid in Anthony and, and hopefully win, showcase my skills, and yeah. Awesome. Anthony, you, you're training in New Jersey. Talk a little bit about your training situation and, and uh, who some of the people are that are really helping build your young career. Um, well, I train, my two coaches are Mario and Brewer, and then um, I wrestle with a, another coach, Vinny Leone. He's awesome. And then Joey comes down twice a week to train. And then I got Leo in a lot. And um, all the hometown guys are really good. And we're, we're building something special out there. We're all at St. John's. And hopefully win a state title this year as a team. And hopefully get a bunch of individual ones too. Awesome. And, and what about you, Luke? What's, who are some of the people that are really instrumental in your training situation? Uh, Cornell Robinson, who is the new uh, sim head coach. And then Sam Hansen, who is my main club coach and freestyle coach so guys are really pouring into you it's awesome to see um it's a big opportunity on a big stage luke what do you what do you think about about this event the lights the cameras all that kind of stuff uh what, what does it mean to you to kind of put it on the line on that kind of a stage uh it means a lot you know it's it's obviously a great opportunity and just it's an opportunity for everyone to to learn to learn how to wrestle with on the big stage and in the bright lights so what do you think, what, what do you compare this to? What's the kind of the big stage, the biggest one that you've experienced or that you feel like maybe prepares you for this? I would say the world finals. So. It's a pretty good stage, <laughs> pretty good stage to wrestle on. You've been on some stages yourself, Anthony. Fargo finals, you got to wrestle on the card with Jordan Burroughs and David Taylor. Um, what do you take from those experiences that'll maybe help you tomorrow? Well, being on the Burroughs Taylor card, I felt was a lot more pressure. And um, at that point, I've matured a lot since then, so I was looking at pressure as a bad thing, but now that I have pressure, I, I think it's a good thing. I think I earned it. And um, walking in here and seeing guys that I know is a lot different than walking in here and seeing David Taylor and Jordan Burroughs warming up yeah. on the card that I'm going to wrestle. I have the same confidence, and uh, I think I'm going to go out there and dominate tomorrow. What do you guys think? You said dominate tomorrow. What do you think the match is going to look like? What kind of style of match? What are people going to look forward to for this match in particular? Um, I'm going to try to keep the match at my pace. and. Um, uh, I, he shoots a lot, I shoot a lot, it's going to be a shootout. Every, I think everyone knows that. We're both really good wrestlers and uh, we're going to put on a show. Luke, how would you predict how this match is going to go? What kind of match people are going to see? Yeah, it's going to be a high pace, uh, hopefully lots of scoring, but hopefully I come out with the win. Love to hear it. You guys both want to win. You both believe you're going to win and I think that's awesome. The match is going to be great. I'm looking forward to it. Guys, good luck in your preparations between now and tomorrow. Thank we'll you. see you then. Our next match is gonna be at 152 pounds. It's Jordan Williams, it's Caleb Henson. This is a battle of Fargo champs. Uh, man, you guys both had some drama in your Fargo finals. Uh, it was awesome. Caleb, what are, you, what are some of the moments that you remember from that Fargo final now, a couple months later? Uh, the foot sweep was a big moment and just staying committed the whole match to my game plan and like what I wanted to go out there and do and really just the mental focus I had throughout that match. It's the biggest key to me. Huge, huge key. Made for a really fun match. Jordan, your Fargo final was crazy. You had to score yeah. super late. That's, that's just how you like to wrestle in those kinds of matches, right? Uh, what, what do you remember from that Fargo final? 
Uh, I know it was it was kind of hard wrestling because I wrestled at the week at Junior Rose and I I kind of I kind of had like a it was a little bit easier so like he kind of had a good game plan going in there. It's kind of hard to score because uh, he just dropped down to my ankles where I couldn't do anything. But it was uh, he I noticed that he kept shooting to like my uh, my right leg on a high crack and going under. So I just looked for a crotch lift. But it was, it was decided, though, like getting the last second, though. Last second, uh, backflip, man, super fun <laughs> to watch. Um, Jordan, you've spoken in interviews before about this last year and some of the it's kind of the, some of the struggles you went through and the break that you had to take from wrestling. A lot of people probably find themselves in situations like the one you were in. What would you say to someone who, who's maybe struggling with some of the pressures of wrestling, struggling with maybe not feeling motivated uh, and, and maybe needing some advice? What would you say? I would say don't quit on yourself. You know, believe in yourself and uh, invest in yourself and that's what what I did I kind of need to take a little break which the break I kind of took I probably should never stop practicing but like if you need a need a little break from like competing or whatever I mean you take it I mean like mental health is important I know pe some people struggle with that and I get that so I just say just keep, don't give up on yourself though that's something you don't want to do though I know you keep pushing don't give up on yourself yeah. it's great advice um, Caleb, you're part of a, a group that's coming out of Georgia right now yeah. that, that has had a ton of success, that looks to continue to have a ton of success on the next level. What has been so special about this group of guys that's been coming through the state of Georgia? Well, I'd say it's the family thing about it. Like, I mean, we grew up wrestling VAC on Minion. Like, it's the same group of guys from, like, when we were in fifth grade to now. And now to see what we're doing, going to the ACC, Big Ten. Like, I mean, it's awesome. And I'd say the key was that we never hated each other. Like we never like we're trying to compete against each other. We are in a good way where we're competing with each other in the room, but at the end of the day it's minion versus the world to us. So that's that was that's the nice part about it. Just having that group of guys that had a chip on their shoulder and something to prove from the south. Yeah, that's awesome. I asked you about your Fargo final, but I didn't ask you about Jordan's. Uh, did you get a chance to watch that match? Obviously, live you were maybe warming up and not paying attention, but maybe it was live, maybe it was after the fact. Did you get a chance to watch Jordan, and what are you prepared for when you think about his style? I mean, I think it's going to be some fireworks. I mean, I'm a shooter. He's an offensive guy, so, I mean, we're going to go out there. It's my game plan. People wrestle his style a lot, so I'm going to go out there, and I, I oppose my will. I, I wrestle my style when I go out there, so, I mean, the game plan is to wrestle my match. That's with every match, though. But no, I didn't get a chance to watch his match. I was laser focused for my match. Yeah, Jordan, uh, I don't know if you've had a chance to watch Caleb's Fargo final or other matches. What do you expect this match is going to look like and what's, what are some of the things that you're preparing for heading into tomorrow? Uh, I know he's got heavy hands. I know that. And uh, he's straight, straight forward, which I'm not going to play into that. I mean, I'm going to keep my distance or whatever. And I'm just, I really don't have a game plan. I mean, making my match instead of giving it in his favor, which I know he's like more in contact so i'll just probably start try uh stay away from that all right awesome other than your match is there another match on the card that you're most excited about watching um probably honestly the four man i'm kind of i want to see who comes out on top on that because i mean like it can go like a couple different ways in that i mean they're all tough and stuff so i think the four man would be what i want to see the best either either one to yeah. me Really intriguing. I'm, yeah. I'm curious to see how that goes, too. Caleb, is there one you're looking forward to? I think watching my boy Jesse and Casey is going to be pretty fire. I mean, I can't lie. Both of those are scrappers, and that's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting for sure. Your guys' match is going to be exciting as well. I'm really looking forward to it. Guys, best of luck as you prepare for tomorrow night. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. All right, our next matchup is going to be 195 pounds. Is Dylan Fishback, Gavin Nelson. Guys, I'm super excited to, to see this one. You guys were, were competing on opposite sides of the world in July. Uh, Gavin, what did you take away from the Cadet World Championships? Uh, I had a great time in Budapest with all the guys, training with uh, you know all the guys that made the world team. And uh, it's just a little different style over there. Everyone, all the, you know, the Russians, they're slick and everything. Everyone wrestles a little different. So it was, it was a blast being over there. 
yeah, big, you know, big style matches. You learn a lot of things. It's, it's great. Um, Dylan, what were some of the takeaways for you from Fargo? I mean, you got it done in a really, really loaded weight class. Uh, what were some of the big takeaways, not just from your finals match, but as you were progressing through that tournament? I mean, uh, I learned a lot just by taking one match at a time, regardless of how the match went, just move on to the next one and just keep looking to score in every match. The match on the big stage with Shoemate, it was, it was pretty wild. It was one that got people pretty fired up. It's a, a big action in that one. What do you remember about that match in particular? Uh, I mean, he kind of tried to push me around a bit, so I, I just kind of kept my cool and just kept looking to score the next point. Kept looking to score the next point. You did. You got it done. Earned your golden ticket. What was going through your head when you knew, found out, all right, I'm going to be, be wrestling at who's number one? I was pretty excited and pumped up because I've been looking – to get asked here for a while and just finally got the chance to prove that I belong here. Gavin, you got back from Budapest and then you found out you had the opportunity to wrestle who's number one as yeah. well. What were you thinking when you found out about that opportunity? Uh, I was real stoked. I was pumped. Uh, my teammate, former teammate, now wrestles at Cornell, Ryan Sokol, wrestled here two years ago. So I remember his experience of him being here and everything. He told me how it was all going to go. So I was real stoked when I found out that I was going to be able to wrestle here. The matchup. What kind of match do you think people are going to look forward to tomorrow? If someone was asking, why should, you, why should I watch 195, what would you tell them? Uh, I think that people should look forward to our match because we're, we're both two high-leveled wrestlers ready to throw it all out on the mat, and we're both going to lay it all out and wrestle, our, wrestle to our full potential. Full potential sounds awesome. What do you think, Dylan? Same question. What would you say if someone said, why should I watch 195? I mean, I would say, yeah, we're bigger, but... Still going to be a lot of action, a lot of hand fighting, a lot of wrestling in general, so it'll be good. You guys have both committed to colleges. I'm curious about what you're looking forward to when you think about those programs. Dylan, NC State, Pat Pop, the Wolfpack, what are you looking forward to there? Um, just being a part of the culture there. Uh, Wolfpack is just great culture and hopefully winning a team title and a couple individual titles myself, so looking forward to that. Awesome, sounds good. And Gavin, committed to the University of Minnesota. What's that? What's what gets you excited about being a Gopher? Uh, the history of Minnesota Gophers heavyweights. Uh, I'm I'm going in at planning on being a 97 pounder. Minnesota has a great history of 97 and heavyweight. A gr great culture all around, every weight. But Minnesota is known to produce great heavyweights and bigger wrestlers. So I'm stoked for that and being that being that type of program. Yeah, crazy tradition when you think about the upper weights. I've got to ask you about the Gable Stevenson news, right? It's, it's such a unique situation. The guy's wrestling in WWE. The guy's going to be a gopher at the same time. Yeah. What do you think about that? It's going to be awesome. Seeing him in the room during, throughout, throughout the weeks and just talking to him. He's such a, such a smart guy. And he just knows what's going on 24-7. So it, it's great to see what he's got going on right now. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be really fun. And I've been asking this to a lot of people, and I'm curious to get your guys' thoughts on this. Um, other than your match, the match that you guys are going to compete in, yeah. what's the match you're most looking forward to see, uh, and what do you think is going to be maybe the most exciting match? Of course, obviously, other than 195. Gavin, we'll start with you. Um, I'm excited to watch the big boys wrestle. Nick and uh, Christian are going to have a great match, but Jesse Mendez is showing up right now. He's wrestling like a dog, so I'm excited to see what goes on with his match. Heck yeah, both are going to be awesome. What about you, Dylan? Yeah, I was, I was actually going to say the same two matches, uh, uh, Swiderski and Mendez and Carroll and Feldman. I think those are going to be two good matches. I think so, too. I think top to bottom we're going to have some awesome action, mm -hmm. including your guys' match. It's You guys are high-flying. You're, you're super imposing, big physical guys. I can't wait for the match. Guys, thanks for sharing your thoughts, and we'll see you tomorrow. Yes, Thank sir. you. Thirty-eight pounders with me. This is going to be a, a match that a lot of people are excited about. I've been asking a lot of people, a lot of the other guys, what, what are matches you're most looking forward to, and this is one that people are circling. They want to see you guys scrap. Why do you think people are so excited for this match at 138, Jesse? Let's start with you. I mean, we're both aggressive. We're, I mean, we're going to come at each other. We're going to butt heads, and I mean, it's going to be a war the whole time. A war. That sounds like a match that I would want to see. Um, Casey, what do you think about this style matchup? Um, pretty much the same thing he just said. I mean. I'm coming, you know, you know, I'm coming, and uh, 
I know he's ready and I'm ready. It's going to be fun. So. You said you're coming. I mean, that's your style, right? You you typically are. Uh, you know, you're all out. You're you're high paced guy. Uh, where did you where did you learn that style, and why is it important for you to wrestle that kind of style? Uh, my whole life, I've just been so competitive. You know, I want to, and everything I do, I, I you know, I hate losing. I don't want to lose, and I want to win with you know, better than you know, two to one, four to three. You know, points on the board. You know. Jesse, how would you describe your style though, to people who who maybe haven't haven't seen you wrestle yet? I mean, I'm, I'm going to be coming the whole time. I'm aggressive. I'm in your face. I'm technical. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be in your face the whole time. When you think about this match, how do you envision it playing out tomorrow? Uh, I think I'm going to wrestle a hard match. I mean, we're going to go back and forth. I mean, we're going to put on a show, and I think at the end of the day, I'm going to get my hand raised. Casey, what do you think? When you envision this match, how do you see it going? Uh, I've been, you know, I've been training real hard. Um, I'm, you know, I'm coming at them, and... Uh, no doubt, no doubt, I think uh, I've already visioned it. I think I'm going get to get the job done, and uh, it'll be fun. So, Awesome, man. Looking forward to it. Um, guys, we want to talk a little bit about the recruiting process. You guys are at different stages in that process. Casey, committed to Iowa State. What gets you excited about being a Cyclone? Um, the family. I was just down there. Um, actually, I was just down there for my official visit, technically. I was already verbal, but uh, just the guys there, it's just – they they bring you in. It's a family down there, and we're ready to we're ready to win. You know, we're ready to. Me and Manny are, got a good uh, recruiting class already. I think Falsic just committed too. We're looking at some other guys, but uh, it's just it's a family, and we're ready to win. Dudes are ready to uh, you know get in the practice room, not messing around, and and ready to win. You know, so. Yeah, good stuff. And Jesse, you're in the middle of the recruiting process right now. Still haven't made a decision and, and you know, you've got a, a lot of things to consider. What have been some of the biggest takeaways for you from the last few months of the recruiting process? You know, just getting to know everybody. I mean, I'm really committing the next eight years of my life because, I mean, I want to wrestle internationally. I want to wrestle at the world level, at the Olympic level. So I'm really taking my time with the process, really making sure I'm making the right decision. I want a really strong RTC with, you know, partners. I want just like all around, I want good school education, everything. Yeah, the, the you know the international opportunity. You said that's a big piece for you. Made a junior world team, and then I think maybe where you opened even more eyes than that was at U23 trials. Obviously, ended in an injury in the finals. But um, what what were some of the things that allowed you to have so much success, particularly against D1 All American level guys at U23s? Yeah, I just I think it's the way I train. I go in there every day with a purpose. I'm trying to get better. So I mean, every day I'm trying to, you know, bring myself to that edge where I feel like I'm going to break and every day I'm trying to push that farther and farther back. You had the uh you had that disappointing injury. What were what were some of the things that went through your mind as you were kind of recovering from that adversity and having to deal with not getting what you wanted? Yeah, I mean, I was pumped to go into that third match, you know, with a possibility of making another world team, but I mean, it sucks the way it ended. I just had to recover and, you know, get back on the mat and just rehab, you know, stretching, get mobility back. But, I mean, I'm back. I'm 100% ready to go. Casey, you had Fargo final, didn't go your way. What has it been like for you getting over that adversity, maybe using that as motivation or, or as a learning experience? Yeah, um, that was crazy. I mean, I didn't, I didn't was, I was, I'm not going to say, I, was, I don't want to put out excuses, but, you know, I wasn't really training too much for that. And uh, it was tough. It's a, Fargo's hard, man. It's a hard tournament, mentally and physically on your body. Um, you know, dropped drop that match, took a week off, you know, got the call, and went right into it. You know, six, six seven weeks, you know, you know, nose on the grindstone, just, you know, putting myself in the best position uh, to win this match, you know. And I, I'm three times, maybe four times the wrestler I was at Fargo, I promise you that. What has it taken in the last several weeks for you to get from where you were in Fargo to, to three or four times better? I mean, it's taken a lot. I mean, Scott Burnett um, over in Ohio, he's, he's been right there with me, took me under his wing, you know, deep waters every day at practice. Like he was just saying, the breaking point where, you know, you're just you're dying. But you, and then the next day you come in and you go a little bit further every day, you know, running. It's, I'm ready, man. Well, I'm ready to see it. Jesse, last few weeks, what's been the focus in training for you? Yeah, just, I mean, really fine-tuning my techniques, trying to pick up new stuff, just adding more technique to my arsenal. I mean, he kind of touched on it a little bit, just keep on killing yourself. Like, I don't think there's anybody that works as hard as me. I mean, 
I think me and Casey see eye to eye and we're, the way we train, like we're going to go until we can't walk. And that's how I go into it training for this. You guys pretty much have me run, ready to run through a brick wall right now. Um, I think people are going to want to circle this match and they're not going to want to miss it. I, I'm not going to miss it. I can't wait. Guys, thanks for sharing your thoughts and we'll see you tomorrow. Good luck. Thank you. Tune in. All right, second last match that we're going to talk about today, 120 pounds, we've got Joey Cruz, we've got Nate Jezroga. This is a match I'm really looking forward to. Joey, you got the call late. You got the call Sunday about this matchup. You took it on short notice. What's the last week and you know, the last five days been like for you getting ready for this? Um, you know, I, I, I've been training a lot. So it wasn't like a, you know, like a big, like, oh, you know, I'm going to start working out hard and stuff. So, yeah, I've, I've been pretty much ready you know, for, for a call. And, yeah. You're ready. Didn't take, I mean, you, you, at, you know, moments notice you were in. Nate, what was that like for you on, on Sunday, getting the news that Mark Anthony McGowan's out, now it's Joey Cruz as an opponent. Anything changed for you? What, what, were going, what was going through your head? Um... It was like a little disappointing at first, but and then a quick turnaround because I, I realized I was going to be a wrestler again against a good opponent. So it like got good now. I don't care. Yeah, um, man. Yeah, it's it's great. You guys are both just game. And and speaking of being game, Nate, this summer Cadet Worlds, you made the team. That was a, a really tough bracket that you went through domestically, and then you went to Budapest and brought home a world medal. What are some of the things from that experience that, that stand out to you as some of the most important moments? Um, I definitely, I got better from, from Worlds, from losing. Um, my coach, my coaches uh, helped me find out what I do better, what, what I can do better, so yeah. Getting, getting some improvement from, from losing, that's great. Uh, Joey, what's been some of the major areas of focus for you this summer in your training and, and as you're you know, looking to become the number one guy in the country? Um, you know, uh, lots of hard work, you know, extra work. Um, you know, going, going further into more technique, you know, the, the little stuff, you know, uh, and getting bigger for college and uh, yeah. Awesome. And speaking of college, recently committed to University of Oklahoma. What was it that got you excited to be part of that Sooner program? Um, you know, the staff is, is really good. You know, not only that, the team. And uh, I, I feel like that's, that's going to be a good, big jump for me. Awesome. Nate, you're in the middle of the recruiting process, kind of probably early on in that, right? What's this summer been like for you recruiting-wise as you're trying to kind of sort through all the different information about, about a lot of different programs? Uh, it hasn't been too bad. Like, I'm just still focusing on wrestling. The, the coaches have been pretty cool about it, uh, letting, letting me have my space. So, yeah, same, same thing. Nate, when you think about your about your training situation, and you think about about some of your partners and coaches, who are the people that have really been instrumental for you in, in getting you to this point? Um, yeah, my partners at Seabolt, my coaches TJ, uh, Jake Agnich, my family, yeah. Great, and Joey, same question to you. Who have been some of the people that have been instrumental in helping you find success? Um, Coach Luna, you know, C Coach Izzy, Is Israel Silva, and uh, yeah, uh, that's All right, last question, and this is for both of you guys. Why do you think people should be excited about the 120 match in particular? Joey, let's start with you. Um, it's just going to be a good show. All right, great. Nate, what about you? Why should people be excited for your match? Uh, it's going to be exciting. It'll be fun. But lots of attacks. It'll be a fun match. I'm looking forward to it, guys. Good luck. Thanks for sharing your thoughts, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.
All right, the main event, the last match of the evening tomorrow night is going to be the big guys. People are fired up for this big man super match. It's Nick Feldman. It's Christian Carroll. And, man, I couldn't be more excited for this matchup. Christian, what do you, what do you think about when, uh, when you look forward to this matchup? Um, you know, I'm just happy to get after it. And I, I went up, you know, trying to chase the best guys. And he's the next best guy. So um, I'm not running away from competition. Um, I think some guys in our country that will – try to hang on to the number one spot and it's not about that my overall growth it's i want my point a to point b i don't care what it what it is but my end goal is to be an olympic champ so whatever it takes to get there that's what's going to happen nick why are you excited about this matchup what do you think about when you're when you look forward to wrestling christian uh i mean yeah i mean my goal is to always wrestle the best guy that i can find and right now that's christian so you know i'm really looking forward to just getting out there getting after it having fun that's what it's all about Nick, in Fargo, you were hoping to be there competing. Didn't get to because of injury, but Christian Carroll was the one that ended up winning that weight class. Did you get a chance to watch that? And if so, what were some of your takeaways from his performance? Oh, yeah, no, I, I definitely watched it. I mean, he looked great out there. I mean, that's, that's a big reason why he's here, I think. So, um, yeah, I think this will be like, yeah, it sucked that I couldn't get out there and wrestle with him, wrestle with all those guys. But, yeah, I guess this kind of makes up for it. It makes up for it. We get to see the match now. And i got to ask you about that tournament, Christian. Uh, there were some wild matches in there. Um, what, was it the semi or the quarter where you were, where you were quarter. down? Quarter. Quarter final, yeah. down cr that crazy match, Bennett Tabor. What do you remember about that match? And then what do you remember about the rest of the tournament? So uh, that match, I know I was like going into the tournament. I started taking guys, bam, bam, bam. And uh, I was so excited to get on the mat and wrestle that uh, I started taking shots. I won the tech so badly. So, um, you know, when it was a break, I kind of talked to my coach like, hey, you got to chip away. You got to gain your thoughts get back to what you do best and that's hand fighting grind get matches out and go tech go tech and that's what i did i stayed persistent i went out there attacked my guy and got the job done then in the finals got it done on the big stage what was that moment like for you yeah no that was a really awesome moment to experience um and also you know outside of just myself represent god my family um my club my state and everyone that you know put the work or was behind me so it was awesome moment on a big stage Nick, we've seen you on some big stages before, including last year here at Who's Number One. What were some takeaways that you had from competing at Who's Number One last year, and how will that help you as you prepare for this match tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, I'm super lucky I got to do this two years in a row. I mean, I couldn't ask for anything more. And, uh, you know, kind of knowing what that stage feels like, you know, what this environment feels like, I think will help me out. And just, you know, having a little preparation, readiness, I think it'll, I mean, it won't make a huge difference, but maybe it'll help me out a little bit. I want to talk to you guys about the recruiting process. Nick, you're committed to Ohio State, you're going to be a Buckeye. What went into that decision, and, and why are you excited to be part of that program? Yeah, I'm beyond excited. Uh, you know, I just love all the guys out there, the coaches, I mean, the environment, everything is – I mean, I, I went there and I felt like I was, like, at my second home. And, I mean, I just can't – I can't even explain how happy I am to be able to go there. Yeah, big big pickup for them. I'm excited to, to to follow that. And Christian, you're committed to Illinois. It's it's you know a program with a coaching change, a program that's really starting to move in in a really positive direction. I mean, it's already a very strong program, but it seems like things are already starting to pick up for Coach Poeta. What are you looking forward to about Illinois? Yeah, definitely. Um, just the coaches there and kind of the atmosphere they built and are still building right now. So uh, I think Coach Poeta is going uh, as far as the right direction on things, as far as building this program and um, bringing the line back to the top. But um, I love Coach Poeta. He's an awesome guy. All the staff, they're super fun guys. They keep it really fun. Um, you know, I wasn't really getting, you know, sold on and stuff. They really were just personal guys and um, great, mo almost great role models, almost father-like guys. And that's the type of people I want to be around with. That's exciting. Uh, Christian, I think, I think your photos of your flex after Super 32 were like the most popular <laughs> flex. And then, and then you got the Fargo one. Uh, <laughs> which, which one do you get hit up about more often? Um, I think, I think the Fargo one, since it's most recent, but I think the Super 32 one's the most iconic one, because that's kind of what started it all off. So, um, I more use it as a, a brand builder and, like, trying to build a persona than really, um, I guess to get a cool photo, you know? So, yeah. I'm just trying to uh, pave the way, especially with the new college rules as far as um, making money and stuff like that, getting sponsorships. So, I think it's a great way uh, to help promote myself, um, a big figure, stuff like that, so smart to be thinking that way that's really interesting um nick dude you had a, a video that went pretty viral recently uh you got you got a trick finger which i didn't know um but what, what was the response like espn's picking picking up your finger i saw it like on russian instagram accounts all this stuff uh what, what, what were the, some of the feedback from from your 
finger, a crazy well, finger. I think it was just great video quality, you know. So <laughs> congratulations you. on that. <laughs> but uh, no, I mean, that's just having fun. Uh, Busted up finger. I mean, it's good for a few laughs. It's a, it's a pretty good trick. So, How long uh, has it been like that? A few years. I'd say since like, I think it happened like seventh grade probably. It's wild. It yeah. is a wild thing to see. Yeah. You guys are the headline. People are fired up for that match. Other than your match, is there another one on the card that you're most looking forward to? Nick, let's start with you. I got to say uh, Jack Waymeyer. I mean, he's my teammate. I love the kid. And I think he's going to do great. Okay, awesome. Christian, is there another match you're looking forward to? Uh, definitely just the 170-pound bracket in general um, with Arnold, Rocco, and uh, Rojas. You know, all those guys I'm kind of like, especially Rojas and Arnold, I've been kind of close with. Uh, Rojas and Russell when we were little kids all the time, so stuff like that, and we're pretty close. So I'm just excited to see the guys I grew up with, you know, put all on the line tomorrow. That bracket's full of intrigue. As is this match, we've got two of the most exciting and athletic big men anyone could find on planet earth i can't wait guys i'm excited good luck tomorrow and and we'll see you then thank you thank you all right guys that's going to do it for this press conference here at who's number one this is our headliner we've got an incredible set of matches tomorrow we've got the women's card on tap tonight you're not going to want to miss it thanks for tuning into the press conference and we'll see you tomorrow